Shimano released their brand new Altegra R8100 group set at the same time as their new Durace group set in the summer of 2021. We have all been waiting patiently for it. Now we've actually got our hands on a complete setup. So in this video, we're going to talk you through all the details. As with the generations of Altegra before this one, the key point to note is that aside from the weight, this is functionally identical to the flagship, the all-singing, the all-dancing Dura Ace group set. The key difference is the price. This retails for significantly less than Dura Ace. Yes, it's cheaper. Whoa, 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 what do you mean? Great, that's all I need to know. No, no, it's not. You need to know all of the juicy details as well. So we'll start things off with your headline stats. It's now got a 12-speed cassette. It's now wireless from the shifters to the rear derailleur, which is then wired to a centrally mounted battery and the front derailleur too. Shifting is even faster thanks to new electronics and even smoother with Hyperglide Plus. There's an Altegra power meter for the first time. Lever ergonomics has changed. The disc brakes now have Shimano servo wave technology to improve lever feel and increase pad clearance, but there is also still a rim brake version. However, mechanical shifting has now gone. Yep, cable shifting is no longer an option. That seems like quite a big shift, if you pardon the pun. If you do like mechanical shifting, you still got options, you still got 105, you still got GRX, but not Altegra anymore. Still, let's not get hung up about this. There is so much juicy tech to tell you about. As I said, the new Altegra is 12 speed. So the cogs and the spacings between them are now narrower than they were before, which means that the overall cassette hasn't got any wider. And this is excellent news because it means that 12 speed cassettes can still fit onto old 11 speed wheels and also indoor trainers. However, if you look inside the cogs, you'll see that they've actually got many more splines on than the old 11 speed cassettes, which makes you think that at first glance, it wouldn't be backwards compatible, but never fear, it is. Now, what it does do is that it means on new 12 speed free hub bodies, it increases the contact area between free hub and cassette, and also, as a side benefit, if you're an idiot like me and you've got an entire drawer at home full of random old individual sprockets, you will be able to see at a glance which ones are 11 speed and which ones are 12 speed. On Durace cassettes, these five largest sprockets are made out of titanium. On Altegra, they're made out of steel. And what that does is it increases the weight ever so slightly by 74 grams, but it also drops the price significantly. The last point on the cassettes, at the beginning I mentioned Hyperglide Plus. What on earth is it? Well, Hyperglide was a Shimano invention from several decades ago where they introduced varied teeth profiles and ramps onto the cassette and the chain rings in order to speed up and smooth out shifting. Hyperglide Plus is the next generation of that where they've added in additional ramps to help smooth out shifts into harder gears to the point where they now feel as smooth as shifts into easier gears. Now, as someone who's been riding for a very long time, that can almost feel a little bit eerie at first because it's a given, isn't it, that upshifts and downshifts feel different. But no, not anymore they don't. In terms of performance, Shimano say that you can now shift under full pedaling load without even thinking about backing off. The chain is a big part of this package too. You will, of course, need a specific 12-speed chain in order to work on that new cassette. 
but it's also been altered slightly. The internal edges have now been chamfered as part of that Hyperglide Plus upgrade. And a byproduct of that is the drivetrain now runs incredibly quietly. And you might be thinking, what? Ultegra has never been noisy, but you just wait. No one's gonna be telling you off for riding in a library anytime soon. I mean, they might tell you off for riding in a library, but not because your drivetrain's noisy. Let's get on to shifting speed, which has got even faster. Helped by Hyperglide Plus, but principally down to a new chipset in the derailleurs and also new motors. So Shimano say that the operating time of the rear derailleur has decreased by 58% and 45% in the front derailleur. And yes, that is exactly the same as Durarace, which is no coincidence because they share the same internals in the derailleurs. But actually the front derailleur shares many of the same externals too, because this one also benefits from that new super low profile. Now the differences between Ultegra and Durace derailleurs then mainly comes down to the materials and the construction techniques that make manufacture more economical. The slight trade-off is a marginal increase in weight for Ultegra, 20 grams for your front derailleur and 47 grams for the rear. Now that's most of the shifting covered, but for me, I've got to say, perhaps the most important part is the lever ergonomics, which doesn't sound particularly interesting, but bear with me, that is the part of the group set that we're in contact with almost 100% of the time, so it is really important. As with Durace, the lever body, so the bit you typically hold onto, has been lengthened slightly. 4.6 millimeters, Shimano say, so you've got a little bit more finger room, but the diameter of it is still really nice and small, which is something that I value quite highly. Now, the top of the lever body, as you can see, has been lengthened slightly and also angled gently inwards, which Shimano says is a response from their pro athletes for an aero hand position. And it does indeed function very nicely as that, but they're not so big that you can't actually still drape your thumbs over, which is often, I find, a de facto climbing position for me. And lastly, the buttons on the levers are slightly larger than before and also more pronounced from each other. So that should make it even easier to differentiate shifts when you're wearing thick winter gloves. Staying with hardware, the brakes have also been overhauled slightly. Now Shimano have included their servo wave technology in this new generation. It's something that's existed in their mountain bike group sets for quite a long time, and also more recently their GRX gravel group set. But it's a welcome addition here on the road. Now the technical description of it is that servo wave changes the leverage ratio as you pull on the brakes. In practical terms, what it means is that you can have good clearance between the pads and the disc, and actually in this instance it's been increased by 10%, but you don't feel that in the lever stroke. And what you do feel though is an increase in modulation because you've got more movement, more, more lever stroke during the braking phase. On previous edition DI2 group sets, you needed a specific additional Bluetooth module. Now though, it's integrated into the rear derailleur, which means that anyone can use the Shimano eTube app straight away. Now, I confess, I'm not one for tinkering too much with shifting functionality. I like it straight out of the box, but you can customize various different things like synchro shift or which buttons on the shifters do what, and even adjusting the indexing of the gears. Crazy. What's also super cool is being able to pair up your head unit with your group set. And so you can use these little buttons on the top of the levers to actually scroll through data screens on your Wahoo or your Garmin. And you can even see what gear you're in displayed on your head unit. Now, one of the big talking points when Durace launched was, believe it or not, gear ratios. What have Shimano done with their new 12th sprocket? Well, in this case, They've got an 11 to 34 option on the cassette, which now gives you a bottom gear of 34, 34, without mixing and matching any components. There's also the 11 to 30 option, where they've slotted it into the middle of the cassette to smooth out any jumps 
in those gear ratios that you typically use on group rides. So it's a 16 tooth, in case you're wondering. Now that isn't exactly revelatory, but it is nice to have. Now, one of the other stories on Durace was that they increased the size of the chain rings on the racing chain set option. So 5440, and that's a response to the faster speeds of, of pro athletes, but also to maximize drivetrain efficiency. You don't have that one here. Instead, we've still got the 5236 and the 5034 options. At the beginning, I mentioned in our headline stats that there was now an Altegra power meter for the first time ever. Unfortunately, I do not have one on this bike, but I'm gonna tell you all about it anyway. So, like the Durace one, it's dual-sided. It lasts 300 plus hours per charge and is accurate, Shimano say, to plus or minus one and a half percent. In fact, the only difference is to Durace is that it's on an Altegra crank, so it weighs 21 grams more, and is more affordable. But otherwise, that's it. I also won't go into too much detail on the wheels because Ollie's already done a wheelie great video on them. Sorry. But suffice to say, Ultegra wheels now have full carbon rims and they're the same rim profile as the Durace version. So the same aerodynamics, just with slightly heavier carbon layups that add between 40 and 138 grams, depending on the depth of the rim. So either 35, 50, or 60. And the other difference is that the freewheel on the Ultegra is a traditional pulled design, as opposed to using the new ratchet that you got on Durace. But otherwise, the hubs are every bit as luscious as the Durace versions. And yes, I did just describe hubs as luscious. I think I need a coffee. <sighs> That's better. Now, the weight of new Ultegra, despite the fact that it's gone semi-wireless and you've got an extra cog, it's just 11 grams more than the previous version. So Shimano are quoting 2,716 grams for a complete group set. To put it into context, the gap between Ultegra and Durace has actually decreased since the previous generation Durace is now just 278 grams lighter. The biggest difference on an individual component is the cassette, which we talked about earlier, 72 grams difference, remember, and also the rear derailleur, which is 47 grams heavier on Altegra. But with the rest of the components, the difference is, well, they're fairly negligible, really. So in total, in pure performance terms, theoretically, if I were to ride up Alpe d'Huez as fast as I possibly could, Durace would make me nine seconds faster. So not a great deal then, really. Whereas in price terms, there is a much more significant difference. Now, I don't know how many people buy complete group sets in their entirety, but should you wish to, Ultegra is about 30% less than Durace. Now, some of the components actually retail for the same price because they are the same, like the batteries, for example. On others, the price difference is quite small, so like the chain and also the shifters and the brake calipers. Whereas on others, like the chain set and also the rear derailleur and the cassette as well, the price difference is much more significant. So in theory, you could choose which components you rode from each different group set in order to tailor your own perfect blend of performance and value. Now, Probably what's more relevant to most of us is the prices for complete bikes. Now, I haven't found one where the only difference between models was the group set. Other factors come into play, of course, as well. But generally speaking, an Altegra equipped bike retails for about five to 6,000 euros or pounds or dollars, whereas a Dura Ace bike will start at about 9,000 euros, pounds or dollars. Now, as I said, that's not all gonna be in the group set. Also, the wheels and the grade of carbon in the frame set and perhaps finishing kit too. If you are gonna buy individual components, then I've gotta say, I doff my cap to Shimano their components are now supplied in fully recyclable packaging. So gone are single-use plastics, which gets a big thumbs up from me. 
Now, lastly, we can't go through this video without addressing the performance and value relationship, which is subjective, so we won't linger long. But suffice to say that with this group set, Shimano have done it again. They have brought Dura's performance to Ultegra price point, but with very few trade-offs. Now, for some, then those trade-offs, i.e. 278 grams, will be important as will the lack of a 5440 and 11 to 28 cassette option. And I'm still gonna put it out there, Durex is incredibly desirable, but only you can tell whether or not you could justify the extra expense overall Tegra. Now, I'll be very interested to know what you think on this though. So get involved in the comment section. Firstly, what do you think about new Ultegra? And secondly, can you justify Dura Ace over this one? Get involved. We're very interested to read your thoughts on it. Lastly, please, well, a big thanks to Shimano. Firstly, for getting us the group set. And secondly, give this video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it.